This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here are today's top stories from Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region. The authorities in Stepanakert have reported the first case of a Nagorno-Karabakh resident dying from hunger as Azerbaijan's blockade of the region passed the eight-month mark over the weekend. Nagorno-Karabakh's Human Rights Defender's Office said yesterday a 40-year-old Stepanakert resident with the surname Hovhanisyan had died as a result of chronic malnutrition and protein and energy deficiency. The agency also shared graphic photographs appearing to show a severely emaciated body lying on an examination table. Azerbaijan's ongoing blockade has led to severe shortages of food, energy, medicine, and other essentials and has pushed Nagorno-Karabakh's roughly 120,000 Armenians to the brink of famine. Last week, Nagorno-Karabakh's health ministry said recent months have seen a substantial uptick in the number of deaths due to cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and strokes, as well as surges in cases of anemia, fainting, and hypertension. The International Criminal Court's former chief prosecutor has said the blockade should be considered an act of genocide and called on the United Nations Security Council to refer the issue to the tribunal. There is a reasonable basis to believe that a genocide is being committed against Armenians living in Nagorno-Karabakh, Luis Moreno Acampo wrote in a widely publicized report last Last week. Starvation is the invisible genocide weapon, he added. The Security Council is set to hold emergency talks on the blockade today at 3 p.m. New York time. In other diplomatic news, on the eve of the Security Council meeting, Armenia's foreign minister phoned his counterpart in Paris, while Azerbaijan's top diplomat placed a call to his opposite in Moscow. Ararat Mirzoyan of Armenia and Catherine Colonna of France reviewed the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Nagorno-Karabakh and discussed the upcoming Security Council talks, according to a readout from Yerevan. In a statement, Paris again called on Baku to lift its blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh and expressed support for the work of the International Committee of the Red Cross and the European Union Border Monitoring Mission in Armenia. The EU said yesterday its observers were present at a shooting incident along the Armenia-Azerbaijan border after a video spread on social media appearing to show an EU monitor taking cover from Azerbaijani fire near the Armenian border village of Verin Shorja. Meanwhile, Jehun Bayramov of Azerbaijan and Sergei Lavrov of Russia spoke by phone to talk about ongoing Armenia-Azerbaijan peace talks in the current situation in the region, according to Baku. In its press release, Moscow said the diplomats put particular emphasis on de-escalating the situation around Nagorno-Karabakh as soon as possible, including the unblocking of the Lachin Corridor. Today will be the UN Security Council's second meeting to discuss Azerbaijan's blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh. After a previous round of talks last December, the Council failed to issue a joint statement or resolution, reportedly amid diplomatic infighting between permanent members France and Russia. More than 100 leading public intellectuals in Israel and Turkey have signed on to separate open letters urging Azerbaijan to lift its blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh. We cannot remain silent, especially in light of our historic and multi-layered connection to the Armenian people, more than three dozen Israeli intellectuals and rabbis wrote in a letter last week to the country's president. And today, about a hundred Turkish academics joined on to a separate letter warning of the possibility of genocide in Nagorno-Karabakh and calling on all states and international organizations to take an active stand to pressure Azerbaijan to end the blockade. Israel and Turkey are two of Azerbaijan's major arms suppliers, and those weapons are understood to have played a decisive role in Baku's victory in the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 1,610. That's the number of weightlifters in Armenia, according to the latest figures from the country's statistical committee. Weightlifting gained a large following in Armenia in Soviet times and to this day remains one of the country's most popular sports. Earlier this year, Yerevan hosted the European Weightlifting Championships for the first time. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground in Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region.